Hey guys, thanks for having me. It is a true pleasure to be here. Um, it wasn't merely seven, eight years ago. I was sitting in the same seats, albeit a little dustier, a little older. Uh, Moody looks incredible, but it is great to be here and um, truly honored to get to talk with you guys today. Um, I'm just going to share seven things that I have kind of learned since graduating. Uh, it's only been seven years since I graduated, so I'm still figuring it out as well. Uh, but that's the great thing, is we're all figuring life out. Um, but these seven things, I think, would have better prepared me for life post-college, post-ACU. So seven tips, and then with each one, uh, a little bit of God's Word as well. So if you forget anything, forget everything that I say, and remember God's Word, because that's what really matters. Um, but let's get right into it. Number one, don't waste these years. Okay, these years are so special. I look back on my time at ACU, and it's some of the best years of my life. Some of my closest friends are friends that I made at ACU. Um, and so I look back and cherish all those friendships and cherish all the experiences that I had. So don't, don't miss out. Sing song, any sing song participants in the room? Surely. Um, freshman follies, social clubs, athletics, intramurals, film fest something that I was involved in, but do it all. Um, there's no better time than right now to start living with a purpose. Um, God's word, Proverbs 3, 5 through 8 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Going right along to number two, don't panic if you don't have a job lined up right when you graduate, okay? I know that is the first thought on all of the seniors in the room, for sure, maybe even the, the juniors as well, freshman, sophomore, you got some time, but don't panic. It's okay if you don't have a job right when you graduate. It's not a big deal. If you can go live with your parents, go live with your parents. It's fine. Don't freak out about it. You can save a bunch of money and you'll find something after that. If you can't live with your parents, that's fine. Find a buddy, go couch surf and you will have an incredible time figuring it out right after college. So don't worry. And if you do worry, and if you do decide to panic, God's word has some advice for you there too. First Peter 5, 7, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God so that at the proper time, he may exalt you and cast all your anxieties on him. Why? Because he cares for you. The God of the universe created you. He cares for you. He knows what you're going through. So you can cast all your anxieties on him. Number three, some hard truth. The world does not owe you anything. The world does not owe you anything. So don't, don't expect to graduate and just be handed a job. That's just not how it works. You're gonna have to work hard. And if you do get handed a job right when you graduate, praise God, that's awesome, celebrate that. But don't expect it to be a cakewalk. Okay, there's gonna be some things that you're gonna to have to figure out in these first months, maybe even years of post-college. The adult world is just, it's very different than, college, than life at college. So don't expect things to be super easy for you. And especially with, uh, I mean, in today's culture, everything is instant, right? DoorDash, instant satisfaction on food. You don't even have to get off your couch to get food now. Social media, swipe, swipe, swipe. That's, part of what I create content for, but it's truly just creating a culture that wants instant, grati instant grati gratification, satisfaction, and that's just, it's not always present. So don't expect everything to come immediately. And then lastly on this point is good work takes hard work. And God's word in Colossians 3.23, in whatever you do, do it with all, or work, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord and not men. Okay, number four, people don't hire a resume. People hire people. Okay, so while a resume is valuable and it is important and you should work hard while you're here at ACU to build that resume, you know, get involved in things, volunteer, work hard in your classes, it does matter. But even more than that is who you are as a person. Right, so arguably, the more, more importantly than your resume is, are you kind? Are you polite? Are you personal? Are you relatable? Can you communicate clearly, calmly, professionally? Can you work through conflict? That is a huge piece of 
life in general. I know you're probably experiencing some level in college right now, but working through conflict is huge. And in that, can you own your faults? Can you own your own mistakes and say, hey, I, I messed up there? And then do you value forgiveness? Like these are the qualities that are so much more valuable than words or numbers on a resume. Psalm 108, or so, sorry, Psalm 103, 8, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Those are two qualities of our Heavenly Father that we should try and emulate in our everyday lives. Um, and to close on this point, you can be the most qualified person in the room, but if you're hard to work with, if you don't have people skills, if you can't communicate, and if you don't value forgiveness, you may find it hard to keep a job post-college. Lastly, or a few more, your identity is not in your job or your career or what you do. It's not in your marital status, it's not in material possessions, it's not in the number that's in your bank account. Putting your identity in these things will for sure make you feel empty inside. And I know from experience, post-college, got this job with Dude Perfect, I was freaking out. This is gonna be the greatest thing ever. And I just immediately, slowly over time, like put my identity in, hey, I am a editor for Dude Perfect. And that left me broken, empty, conflict in the workplace. Nobody's perfect, including Dude Perfect. Um, and th that, was, that was hard and it left me, it left me feeling empty, and that was because I stepped away from my true identity, which is a child of God. And when we seek first the kingdom of God, as it says in Matthew 6, all these other things will be given to you as well. Like, God will take care of everything. We just need to seek him first. And 1 John 3, 1 says, see what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and this is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. So when you put on Christ, that is your identity. You are Christ follower first, then everything else, right? And if you put everything else in front of Christ, it's not gonna work out for you. I'm speaking from experience. Okay, number six, this is specific to the ACU crowd. Ring by spring isn't a thing. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> yes, I thought I, I thought I might get some cheers there, okay. I know for me personally, I was single for pretty much my whole time at ACU and I was thinking in my head, oh, I just wanna get married, you know, this is especially ACU, again, pressure not from anyone in particular, but that was definitely something that I was feeling and I just wanna put at ease all the single people in the room, you're fine. Don't worry about it, okay? I was, I was single for four or five years post-graduating, uh, and it was some of the best years of my life. I got to serve in a young adults ministry, and I had a ton of free time because I was single, and so I got to really dive in there, and that's where I met my beautiful wife, uh, which was incredible. And uh, so yeah, you don't have to be married right when you graduate, um, Psalms 37, 4 and 5 says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord and trust in him and he will act. Finally, arguably the most important lesson, um, and this is kind of like a, this is something that I learned from a guy named JP. Um, if you guys know or are familiar with the porch ministry that's in Dallas, it's a huge young adults ministry. Uh, in Dallas, it's out of uh, Watermark Church, um, and JP uh, was the leader of that ministry when I was volunteering there, and something that he would always say um, to our volunteers and to um, the people that would attend the porch um, was this right here. Devote daily, withdraw weekly, migrate monthly, and abandon annually. So let's break down each of these real quick. Devote daily. Spend time in God's word every single day. And um, transparently, I do not do this well enough, okay? And every day that I do not spend in God's word, I can feel it. I can feel that I'm, I'm not centering myself in my true identity as a child of God. So take time 
to spend time in God's Word every day. And if, if you're like me, the days just, they just run, 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 and I'm on one thing to the next. Boom, 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 boom. And I always, it's 10 o'clock at night. I finally got my little girl to sleep, and I'm exhausted. Oh, no, I didn't read today, you know? So, hey, wake up at 6 a.m., do it first thing in the morning. Just prioritize that time, schedule it in, whether it's at your lunch break. Trust me, it will go a long way. If you forget everything that I said, but remember only this, I'll consider that a huge win. Um, withdrawal weekly, so you devote daily every day in God's Word. Withdrawal weekly, set aside one to two hours a week for yourself, okay? For yourself to s spend extended time in God's Word or just rest, prioritize unplugging from the day-to-day -day social media work, reflect on your spiritual life, what has God brought you through that week, and just get time to yourself and, and treat that as a time to really reset each week. Migrate monthly. Change your scenery. Change your weekly routine. You know, take a, take a short trip um, or, you know, plug in with your church. Serve at least once a month in your church um, and step away from the countless things that, um, that tie you to the material world and reflect on what God's doing in your life even more so. And then to the extreme, abandon annually once a year, take a trip out of town. I love camping, so I would say go in nature, go sit in some trees or some waterfalls or something, you know? I mean, just really get out of the everyday mundane um, city life or ACU life. Just take time to change your scenery. And if you do those four things, that will really help you connect deeply with, with our Heavenly Father. Um, and bonus number eight, this is, uh, this is a bonus one. As a hockey player, I have to quote the true goat of all goats, Wayne Gretzky. You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. Pure elation. I mean, that was insane. We, a quick little mini story, and then I'll get to my main point. We uh, were doing a world record basketball video, breaking all these official world records with Guinness, and obviously we wanted to break the world's highest shot. And so we scheduled two full days in Oklahoma City because that's the closest building we could, you know, call up. Hey, can we throw a basketball off your roof? <laughs> no? Okay, let's call the next one. And we finally found one in Oklahoma City. And we, um, we went there. We had two full days. So, you know, the five dudes are like, all right, everyone get in the van. We're going up there. Don't know if we're going to make it, but get ready to film the same thing for 16 hours straight. Um, whether we make it or not, we're, we're gonna go for it. And so I was the camera on the, on the ground tracking the ball coming down. And in the first three hours, we made the shot. And it, I just remember everyone thinking, oh my goodness, we get to go home. Like that was, a, that was our, favorite, you know, our favorite thought of the day rather than us making it the insane shot. But um, that's just a fun clip, obviously. Uh, but the message behind it is you gotta, you gotta try stuff. You gotta test what's possible, right? So take a chance. My, my story on how I got plugged in with, with Dude Perfect was literally sitting in the university apartments over there and I emailed Dude Perfect saying, hey, I'm about to graduate and I know you're in my hometown. Any chance you have an opening, right? And I mean, yes, there's a few other things I did, right? I, I worked hard in school, you know, and I had a portfolio and whatnot, so I, I had taken the steps to, to try and set myself up for success, but ultimately, it really was a shot in the dark um, that got me in the door. Um, and so, to recap, um, as a former student, I know kind of a lot of the things that you guys are going through, and um, I just want to encourage you with, you know, the things that we just talked about. Don't waste these moments. Uh, don't miss the people around you. Number two, don't panic. And if you do panic, cast your anxieties on God because he cares for you. Number three, believe in yourself, okay? You can do, you can do hard things. And no matter what you do, work at it with all your heart as though you're working for the Lord, not for men. Number four, be kind. Share the love of Christ with all those around you. Um, if you have accepted Christ into your life, your identity is a child of God really hold on to that. Do not forget that because that is the most important thing I want to say today. Um, 
If you're single, that's okay. That was something that I needed to hear. Um, Spend time in God's word and make time to rest. And lastly, take a chance, see what God might do in your life with a courageous ask or a bold request. Um, Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much uh, for just the incredible opportunity to be here today. And God, we just praise you for all that you are doing. God, we know that you are intimately involved in everybody's life in here. And you know the struggles, the fears, the anxieties, the pressures that everyone is feeling. And God, we just pray that you would remind us to trust in you. I pray that you would remind us to cast our anxieties on you because you care for us. God, I pray uh, for these students and for the students even that are visiting today as they have many big decisions ahead of them. I just pray that you would give them clear minds. I pray that you would open doors that are supposed to be open for them. I pray that you would close doors that are supposed to close for them. And in the moments when we don't really know why or what you are doing, God, I pray ultimately that we would center ourselves in our true identity, and that is a child of God, and that you love us, and that you care for us, and that ultimately you are for us, God. Father, thank you for Jesus and what he did on the cross for our sins. We pray all of this in your holy name. Amen. Have a great week of worship.